Welcome to Tech Brother with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to load multiple uh, comma delimited files into SQL Server table. So first of all, we have to have some files. So in for this demo, I have created two files. One is a uh, uh, these are the comma delimited files, and they have different records. So if you see that this has ID one and three, and uh, Amir and uh, some data, uh, two 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 data rows in this file. And uh, I have another file that has uh, uh, ID one, two, and four, and uh, some other names in other fields. And uh, uh, it also has two row data rows. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to develop some package that will load these files. And if uh, tomorrow, if there there would be another file with the same metadata, same information, uh, you know, or same structure, even with a different data, it should load automatically. So let's go and create SSIS package to load these files into SQL Server table. So before we load the, the files into SQL Server table, we have to have a table, right? So I have created a table with some definition. I I called uh, DBO customer and uh, it has. Uh, same columns what we have in the file we have ID first name last name address and phone number so in the test database okay so as creating SSIS package by using bids or uh, SSDT I have a SSDT SQL Server data tools and uh, right click on the SSIS packages and create a new package okay so now we are creating a new SSIS package uh, what uh, we are going to do we are going to do rename the package first load multiple comma the limited files to SQL table that's what we are doing okay so to read the files all those files if it is it is one file we can always make a direct connection and uh, you know load that file but here what we need to do we need to loop through these files and load uh, one at a time so what we need uh, we need to have a container so that's called for each loop container so what it is going to do, it is going to read the files from the folder and then loop through one at a time and then we will load it. Okay. So I'm going to make, um, or I'm going to configure for each loop editor and uh, go on collections. And then what we need to do, we need to browse. Okay. So you go and uh, browse to the folder where your files are. In my case, it's on desktop, so I have input folder. Okay, click on in the input folder, and then what we want to read, we want to read the file name and extension. Okay, so from this folder. All right. So one thing we can do, we can always go here and uh, use the folder name and uh, hard code the things. Uh, but when you are moving your uh, package to production or UAT, what you want to do, you you have to come back and make these changes, you know, in the package and deploy it again. That's not good practice. What I would like to do, I would like to take this value and create a variable and use it here. Okay, so cancel it for now and come back, create a new variable. Okay, so we can call it folder path or input folder or whatever you like. Okay. And the, we are going to name this one. Uh, sorry, this is string type, and we are going to put in the values of the folder. So th this is uh, the, the folder from where we will be reading the files. Go back here, and collections. Now, as we are not hard coding, we are we have to write to expressions, and inside the expression we will provide that variable. So this is equal to directory. So we are providing the directory path where the files are. Okay, so we drag it here, evaluate it all right okay okay now we are reading uh, the uh, files from the folder but we have provided the file uh, uh, folder path by using the variable now we need to read the file name and extension in this case so and then we what we have to do we have to click on the variable mapping and now it is going to ask uh, okay where you want to map that file name and extension and we don't have it here right now so I'm gonna create a new variable to hold that value so I'm gonna call it file name okay and this is going to be string type it's fine okay alright so we have configured this uh, for each loop container successfully but we haven't used uh, any of them uh, that right now uh, in our uh, loading process so I'm gonna do bring the data flow task uh, inside the for each loop okay and then we are going to define 
read and uh, you know from where we are reading and writing the file so we are reading uh, the data from the uh, flat file so I'm gonna bring flat file source here and then double click and use this one here make a connection so right now I can point to any of the file but uh, this will we will go to expression and change it as the file name will be changing with each of the iteration so right now just click one of them and uh, you know take a look on your text qualifiers or uh, you know we have the first uh, row as a header uh, column so we are going to leave this one as it is and go to columns and uh, you know if you need to uh, change the data type for those columns you can do it here i have a id that i know it is a um, integer so i'm going to change that one first name last name and phone number phone number is 10 in my case uh, you know in my destination so i'm going to change that one as well um, then you preview okay everything looks good the next step is uh, okay hold on uh, here retain null values from the source as null values in the data flow that means if you're getting blank values in the source and you want to read them as a null value uh, and that, that's fine I want to do it so I, I check this box go to columns and see the columns are coming correctly all right so the next step is uh, writing this data into the SQL server tab table bring the OLADB destination make a connection and here you have uh, to use the SQL Server instance name and database where your table is existing. If you are using the same project and you have created a you know connection manager in other packages, you can use that one. Um, I'm going to drop it and recreate it to show you. So here you will provide your SQL Server name or instance name, and then you have to provide the database name. Okay, so provide the database name now. Now our case is testdb fine test the connection all right okay so now hit okay and we are loading the data into the one of the table called review customer so go to mapping and see if the columns are mapped correctly and if you have different names at the source and a different name at the destination uh, then the columns will not map automatically so you have to do it manually okay all right so what we have done uh, till now we have uh, configured our for each loop and we have uh, you know used the data flow task to load the data into the table but we have pointed to the one file if i will run this uh, package right now what it is going to do it is going to loop through and uh, run the data flow task uh, twice as I, I have two files sitting in the folder so let's run it and see what it inserts in our table so check the data in the table right now we have uh, no data so let's run it okay wow so it did complete it uh, and uh, it ran so quickly we couldn't see it is uh, trading uh, through the loop one or two so close this one or stop it and then go back and check the data in your table so right now what we say and see the same file is loaded twice but that's not our goal we want to load all the files so let's truncate this table Truncate table. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our SSIS package. And now, as the connection um, uh, manager for the flat file, should change every time and take the new file name. And uh, that, that's where we need to make a change. Right now, it's uh, set to uh, uh, one uh, file, and uh, that's why it loaded two files. Let's go back. Uh, let's go to the properties of this connection manager and then here what we need to do we need to go to the expressions go to expressions hit ok and here we have expression uh, connection string okay the connection string is the complete path for a folder and file so we know that folder path is coming from uh, our um, you know uh, variable and then uh, we need to add uh, the file name to it two times backslash and uh, it's going to add one for us and then we need to add the file name okay right now there is no value in the file name variable that's why you can't see it here and that's fine and uh, but evaluated uh, it's evaluated correctly so what we need to do when we run the package it is going to take the file name first file name first time 
and then uh, load that and next time the file name will change so it will take read the data from the second file hit ok hit ok we let's go back there is no data in the table right now now it should be loading the data from two files start the SSIS package okay the package did complete it successfully so stop the package right now and go back and see if the data is loaded from two files into the uh, SQL Server table. So we can see that the first uh, records are coming from file one and the, the second records are two records are coming from the th second file. So if we will put, uh, let's say if I'm gonna truncate this one right now and then uh, add a new file, let's say I will copy this one and paste it, uh, let me rename this one. Okay, so if I will uh, paste this one here, sorry. Cancel this one right now. Let's go back to the file and paste it here. Okay, this there is no longer uh, located. Okay, as we <laughs> renamed it, um, that's why the file is not there. Okay, let me copy this one and uh, or I have files sitting actually uh, in other folders so I can copy from there you know and uh, we don't have to override these ones and uh, let's go to the desktop we have output folder I have some files sitting here all right go to input folder paste it here uh, compare uh, okay so this file is already existing uh, with the same name and um, so we don't want to override it so let me rename this one and then we will put the next one paste it here okay so now we have three files here one of the file uh, is containing a uh, two record you know and the other one is uh, containing uh, four uh, three records and uh, one of uh, them is containing two uh, two records so if we run this one right now let's see what we have here so we don't have any records so and also we didn't make any change to the package what we did we included more files in the folder and if we run them these all three files should be loaded into SQL Server table okay so we see that um, the package completed successfully let's go back and check if all the files are loaded okay so we can see that the all the three uh, files are loaded successfully the, these couple of them came from one and these couple of them came from the second one and these three records came from the other one so if you are getting files on daily basis with the same metadata or same structure and you need to load to SQL Server table you can use this table uh, the SSIS package and uh, thanks very much uh, for watching this video and uh, you can visit us at sqlh.blogspot.com for more SSIS interview questions video post uh, SQL Server uh, DBA post and uh, bye